Hold on there, Mermaid Esther. Don't forget, your skill set has been custom built. Remember what you were born for. You've got this. I promise that this discontent is divine, despite the pain you're swimming in. Although you're going under, sister, there will be no drowning today. Dive unfathomable fathoms deeper. Rather than look for loopholes, Fashion a life raft from the strands of your very real suffering. Do not be deceived. This misery is no doled out punishment from on high. It is a knock at the door of your heart from inside. Your soul is an imprisoned star fishing for clemency. Let the cage swing, throw it open. You are built of double helixes, a swirling evolutionary journey. This life is a spiraling tide pool. The view of glorious sunlight will spin to the dark side of the moon as it is bound to do with every revolution. I call on you to remember you. Back before you became your own wet metaphor, the innocent kid who turned cartwheels, naked, shameless, and pure. That wild girl who walked into the ocean, delighting in the cold bite. The dreamer who believed in infinity's limitless possibility. The precocious princess not yet stripped of her intuition. Remember when you could clearly see the truth of what was muddying the grown-ups all around you? How you'd watch them rationalize, tell themselves lies, overcomplicate, bury their pain, only to inevitably explode later in the most inappropriate, unrelated, and dangerous of ways, over and over again? Remember the self-sworn oath? Your vow to never let that be you? There's no roundabout route to salvation. The only way out is through. Don't confuse husk with vessel, lest you self-immolate. Subsumed in ocean, while an astonishing fire blazes within, you must spill forth this light or be consumed from inside. This is the sacred act of spark extraction. This is returning to the knowing in your bones. No more ignoring your internal warning system. No more denying inner guidance. No more collapsing under the depth charge of confusion. Sister Mermaid Esther, Gather all of the flooding love that spilled in surging waves from every single heartbreak. Return it to the heart home of your ribs, interstitial glow flowing out from within. Toward the shore, there is a lighthouse of a little girl, sturdy-legged, faithful, and patient, beaming rhythm-encoded messages to you. Swim up to the glimmering surface. Break through. Five. For once, this is easier done than said. But only because it is unsayable, unnameable, beyond language's latitude, outside words, jurisdiction. Allow this.
Collect all of your suffering, all of the discomfort in your own skin, the belligerent self-criticism, pain and frustration, righteous resistance to iniquity, your distrust of self and others, every nagging memory, 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 memory. Do not muck around in it. The trick is simple acknowledgement. Then, offer it up. Hollowed out, now. Breathe, now. There is room for the sound to infuse you. Rhythm resonating through the earth, souls, of your feet seven remember when you were very small in a very big room you were consumed by the music spinning and jumping you let loose you were overtaken your face an abject blissful expression then you felt it happening, panicked. You separated from the moment and sidestepped into observation. You shut down the sensation, swallowed the smile whole. This is the part where your mind wants to fight you. I promise it is worth the struggle. I've yet to have anyone regret passing through this gate. Shame is a stubborn lock. Pick it anyway. The combination is inconsequential where we are headed. Kick in the door if you must. Bust. Turn away from your reflection, expectation, your projections. Know the glory of your physical instrument, the infinite wisdom, the shock absorption of hinges, cord. The way your hips want to unfold in golden meaning, how your arms want to spread, and your sternum wants to lead, and your head wants to throw back. Know your sweetness, your purity, your innocence. Know this is more than permitted. Eight. All that is left, ineffable. As the spiral of time unwinds and we reach the inner tightness. As the tension increases and the spin speeds up to meet this. What we experience is the physics of the quickening. From within this simultaneously terrifying and sacred chaos, I emanate. 
I know my sovereignty. Let history belittle me, label me disobedient. I place this designation as a jewel in my coronation. I'm not one to listen in to the pitiful whimper of egotism, thus missing the whisper of divinity. This is my resistance. My defiance. My refused compliance. Know this. There are definite limits to what the laws of man can accomplish. They can demand my degradation, murder me, make a monster of me, but they are powerless to legislate my soul's autonomy. The secret to freedom is realizing there is no approval to seek from within an infrastructure that is, at best, complicit in your utter destruction. My crime? Unwillingness to be paraded around naked in only my crown? Unwillingness to be a trophy? A puppet? A pawn? My crime? I'd rather be having my own ingathering than awaiting an engraved invitation to objectification. My crime? Honoring my majesty. Sisters, we are in the midst of a massive metamorphosis. Transformation by nature is inherently treacherous, but this does not permit us to remain in stasis. Before this dissolution could even begin, our imaginal selves were whispered into new manifestations of existence, nascent potential awakened. We are the budding of new wings. We are the opening. We are the infinite unfolding. We are bravely entering the space of not knowing. We have faith in what awaits us in the liminal spaces beyond the reach of intellectual limitations. We are reawakening in the garden, in the season of our sweetness, completing our receiving in a state of love so deep we soar in awe. In an endless desert, outside of time, a circle of priestesses practices augury. They watch the skies in a state of ancient ritual divination enacted in cases of religious, business, and political decision-making for millennia, interpreting birds' flight patterns as guidance in crucial matters. They are known as augurs, and they are currently watching in horror. 
Note the sturdy word trees the auger's birds are perched in. Their roots go deceptively deep. It's worth disturbing the peace and digging in the dirt to get to the genesis. Inauguration. A ceremony wherein birds' actions are observed by augurs practicing augury. A political decision would be made and a leader would be inaugurated based on the ways of the birds, which is why I've been viewing hawks circling, noticing crows sweeping in, beholding hummingbirds honey suckling, I'm seeing bald eagles tendering their letters of resignation, unwilling to be guilty by association. I've been breathing in natural secrets, studying the bumblebee's choreography, burying my nose in blossoming floripondio, laying hands upon all manner of rock, crystal, and mineral, listening to the whisper of the wind and river. This is the gist. The wisdom arisen from competition and ego assertion is worthless. It's high time for a new style inauguration. Time to repo hijacked linguistics, get really specific, and get down to business. This is our ordination. By the power vested in we, by our collective soul agency, we hereby declare we do solemnly care. We care about love so much, we will endeavor to bask in full moonlight as often as possible, to dance, to hug, to laugh, to feel awe. We do solemnly care enough not to go radio silent, not to choose blindness, not to keep quiet. We do solemnly care for the plight of our sisters and brothers. We know that if we're not speaking up, we're not even in the galaxy of doing enough. Safety pin sentiments are lovely, but they can't pierce the veil the way it needs to be to expose the horrific inequality and actually change what we must no longer tolerate. This tricky society will gift us for our complicity. It deeply desires our silence. We do solemnly care enough to rise up and defy this. We do solemnly care about this quickening. We are listening. We do solemnly care. Even though exposing our own hearts does make us easy targets, regardless, we lay down our weapons, we drop our defenses, these walls are so senseless, we do solemnly care enough to be hopeful. Best be on our best behavior. Best maintain our integrity. Best step up to our greatness. We know that it awaits us. Best believe the high priestesses will be watching the skies, auguring closely. Medusa hides behind my eyes, fears her own reflection, wants to wend her way inward. I refuse passage to leather black asps who attempt escape by virtue of spilling from my lips. I swallow them back rather than birth them into material existence. Twinned sirens writhe inside my ribs, mean to seduce, chant tunes intended to consume me within the fluidity of grief. I claw my way up through this wet, broke, and broken aloneness. In direct spite of naysaying and attraction, my pulse still runs amok. The maddening thud smash stays unstuck, in defiance of those who desire no less than my anesthetized quietude. The mermaid who swims in the center of me remembers two words uttered shamanic in Morosa response. 
don't drown. The sorcerer's apprentice under my skin wanders in the grit of city midnight, the air eerily still, the moment stiff and thick with inexhaustible possibility. The moon is a milky pitcher pouring pearlescence down my crown. Empty threats, simple resistance, rejection, damage, abandonment, estrangement, danger, they are not enough to stop me. I was built resilient, made to withstand much greater than petty distraction. I am elemental celestial, fashioned by the hands of my ancestors from their very own prayers and bones. First, Palo Santo smoke, then the commingled aromas of hyssop and rose, next, the rhythm of drums. And after that comes the wet mystery we whispered of for millennia. This is viscera, blood, and gutsy. I was forged in the fiery furnace. It takes way more than inflamed war to burn this. Gathering. The ringing is the calling. 
The ringing is the song you are singing. The song you have been listening for eternally. Thank <laughs> you.